Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regularly scheduled meeting of Sunderland Select Board. Please call to order at 6.30. It's October 31st, 2022. Happy Halloween. If you want to zoom in on the uh, Select Board member to the right, he's very well dressed. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. You're at welcome. At least one of us has Somebody a had to have some spirit here. Yeah, right. Okay. All right, so the first order of business we'll do is the uh, minutes of the uh, October 24th. I would entertain a motion. I motion we accept the minutes of October 24th. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to accept, accept as presented, as submitted the minutes of October 24th. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, we got a three zero vote on that. The next thing up is we have a new business, Commonwealth Strength. Jeff, what, what can you tell me about Commonwealth Strength? Commonwealth Strength is a new fitness facility in Sunderland, right across North Main Street from School Street. I don't recall the address, but I think it's around back. 110, yes. is it correct? Uh, the same like, parking lot as Blue Heron, 110 North Main Street. Warner. And we have the owner here, Emily. Okay, anything else? No. Just All right, a so Emily, yes. congratulations. Thank you. We look forward to having you uh, as a member of our business community. But what we usually do with all new businesses, if so, most times they need some type of licensing, but you don't need a license. No. So, but we do give all new businesses the opportunity to use this as a sales pitch. So you have the floor, okay. you have the you have the uh, press, which is over here on your right hand so side. You did. Yeah. All right. So this is a this is a sec. This is your second chance. So why don't you inform? This is the highly highest rated show on cable TV <laughs> on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying how many, <laughs> but we do get one heck of a review on, on, uh, on YouTube. So Emily, what do you got? Um, so Commonwealth Strength we opened last month, just over a month ago. Um, I'm doing primarily like small group um, training classes. Um, so I have a mix of strength training classes. Um, I have a group called Foundations, which is like small group strength training. Um, so it's circuits of no more than six people where we're going through like full body strength training. Um, and then I have a handful of other group classes that I'm offering too. I teach powerlifting classes, which is like barbell training. I teach kettlebell classes. Um, I've got a class that I call Animal Flow, which is like a body weight strength meets yoga sort of class. Lots of like primal fundamental human movement. Um, and then I have a line of several different mobility classes. Um, we've got a balance class. Um, there's probably a few others that I'm forgetting. Oh, steel mace, which is a very cool implement um, that can be used as a strength tool, but is also like an ancient medieval weapon. Um, so very fun to play with and do work, uh, strength training work with. Um, so I'm kind of offering a mix of personal training, one-on-one -on -one training in the studio, as well as semi-private training, which is um, like anywhere from like two or three people. A lot of times it's like couples that want to train together or family members that want to train together. Um, I've got a mother-son duo that's going to be starting this week, um, so that's the semi-private option. And then the small group strength training and the group classes. Um, so none of the classes are ever going to be more than about 10 people. Um, most of them are more in like the 4 to 6 range. So just a really good space to kind of come and learn about strength training if you've never done strength training before. Um, in a very supervised environment, I pay a lot of attention to form. Um, and we just use a lot, of, a lot of different kinds of equipment, so kettlebells and um, sandbags, bat, uh, barbells, we've got the battle, the big heavy battle ropes, um, medicine balls, TRX. So just kind of like a big mix of equipment um, and a lot of different types of classes depending on what the, the goal is. So a lot of strength classes, but there's also a lot of mobility classes. I've got a Sunday morning mobility class that I teach that's kind of a mix of just stretching and foam rolling and just a really good recovery hour. Um, so that's every Sunday morning, a really good way to start the week. Um, I am in the process of hoping to bring in a few other instructors. It's just me and then I have one instructor now who 
teaches a balance class twice a week, um, but I'm working on getting a yoga instructor as well as um, a niece instructor to come in. So there will be a few other people um, coming on board within the next couple of months. So what's the best, you want to tell us anything about, about your background? Yeah, so I've been working in this field for about eight years. Um, I, I'm from the area, I grew up in Greenfield, but I actually was out in Boston um, after college for about six years, which is where I started working and training. So I worked for a couple different gyms out in Boston um, and then moved back here about five years ago. I was working at a gym in Hadley called 5050 um, up until the pandemic. And then when everybody got laid off during the pandemic, um, everything kind of pivoted to this new model. So I decided to start my own business um, in the summer of 2020 to kind of try to find a creative way to continue to bring fitness and health into people's lives, especially during a very weird time. So we did Zoom classes, we met outside, we did a lot of classes out in parks. We would meet like on the Hadley Common and just bring equipment with us and that way we could spread out and have fresh air and be, still be together. Um, and a lot of Zoom, personal training and classes. Um, but the goal for the past several years, I would say at this point, has been to open my own space. It was just, I didn't really predict that the pandemic would happen. So I was kind of honed in on the Sunderland or like South Deerfield area because I have a ton of clients who are- This side of the river is nicer. <laughs> you can quote that in the newspaper. <laughs> Um, like I live down in East Hampton, but there's a lot of gyms already in that See, this, area. Yeah, this side, this side of the, this side of the river is still nicer. And uh, it's just it's such a beautiful area. I've really, really loved being. Like I'm right across the street here, and it's just such a so great Emily, intersection to be on. What what age what age groups are you looking for? Um, pretty much all ages. Right now, I've got a couple of people that are in their 20s, um, and I've got people all the way up to like early 70s. Um, I would say the bulk of my clientele is women in like their 50s and 60s, um, but really it's it's open to everybody. I'm kind of hoping to get like some of the younger people in as well. Um, we've just started getting a few college students from UMass that have discovered me and have been coming to classes. Um, I really like when there's a wide range of ages. I think it's a very fun environment to get to, you know, I've learned so much from my clients who are like 20 years older than me and um, it's just a very good way to kind of build community and share you know, knowledge and coach each other. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping for a wide range of ages. I'm actually hoping to get into some youth um, classes and training groups and stuff possibly this summer, like some kids strength camps and stuff. Um, so I, I haven't done a lot of younger people yet, but I'm hoping to get more into like, I really wanna get some teen groups going and like teach, so teach some, younger so people to have a healthy relationship with exercise from a younger age. So some, if someone's watching tonight, which is the highest rated show at 6.30 <laughs> on Monday nights, um, how, how would they get, how would they get uh, in contact with you? Um, so there's a, uh, the website, which is comstrength.com, so it's C-O-M-M, strength.com. Um, we're also on Instagram, comstrengthma, um, the M-A at the end. Um, I try to be pretty active on there as far as like showing little like snapshots of what the classes look like, different pictures of the space. Um, my hope is that it doesn't feel like an intimidating environment to anyone, so it's very cozy and comfortable and approachable, and it's not like a big box gym where there's you know, you know people sweating all over and grunting. Um, it's very cozy and homey and welcoming. Um, Do you have normal hours of operation? Yes. So Monday through Friday, the first class starts at it's um, seven thirty to seven thirty, pretty much on the weekdays, and then on the weekends it's uh, nine to Nine to one, usually there. Okay. So there's a couple classes in the morning, so I'll try to on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, and then there's kind of morning, midday, and evening classes on the weekdays. So do you want to describe how, where you're located? Where? Yes. Yeah. So if you if you're coming, I guess heading north on 47, right here, and mm -hmm. you turn onto Warner Drive, which is where you turn for the parking for Blue Heron. Um, where like the it's like a white garage building with a big garage door. So there's an over there's a you're it, you would be heading um, just south on the south side of the Blue Heron. Yes. You're you're the uh, second building on the right hand side. You have the garage over the overhead doors, the garage doors, and you're located inside of there. Yeah, it's like right behind the brick building that's next door. To yeah, the, that, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's so, a little so. confusing. <laughs> No. We, they did just put up signs for us on the corner, though. So there's, there's a sign right on the intersection of Warner Street and North Main. There's a sign that shows where to turn. So e Emily's business is located right in the center of town, right opposite on the other side of the Blue Heron. Yes. 
Okay. And, and, and again, and now can people just walk in and talk to you or? Yeah, I mean, I, people can definitely walk in and if they catch me, I'm there pretty much all day, every day. So the chances are pretty like, Congrats, pretty the, like the life of a business uh, owner. It's definitely, I'm, I'm there most days, most of the time. Yep. So I've had a lot of great people, neighbors popping their heads in and coming to check out. Um, I think the Sunderland residents have been very excited that there's finally a gym. Um, so definitely, you know, feel free to pop in. I would say there is a chance that I might be like with a client or teaching a class. Um, so they can also email me um, if they want to set up. Um, like I've been kind of recommending that people set up kind of a consult where you just kind of come in, meet me. We'll talk about the different classes. We'll talk about the rates. Um, we'll give you a little tour of the gym and kind of get to know your goals. Mm -hmm. so that's generally where I recommend all the new people start, and that's been a great way for me to get to know people. Um, there is a link if you do go to the website, which is comstrength.com. There's a link right up top that's like schedule a consult, and then I'll get kind of some information. So you can submit it online, and then I get a I get an email that you filled out the form, so I can get back to you within a day or two to kind of set that up. So that's generally how I recommend. It is helpful to go through the website. Certainly, people are welcome to pop in. It's just there's a chance I might be with a client and not really able to talk. Um, okay. Uh, Crystal, Nathaniel, questions? Come. No, I'm, I'm excited also about having there be a, you know, a gym in town. It's awesome. Yes. Um, Hadley's a lot further than a lot of people want to drive. <laughs> Nobody wants to drive under nine. So no. Um, yeah. Another thing that I'm planning to do is like some charity workouts. So I'm hoping um, within the next few months to get that going. Mm -hmm. It's basically going to be like probably one Saturday every month where we do kind of a more like an event workout where all the proceeds from that class would go to a charity. So I'm always kind of like looking for suggestions of charities that people want to support or if there's local organizations that we should support. Um, so if people have suggestions and would want one of our workouts um, to have the proceeds go to their organization or their group, like that would definitely be something that I would be interested in getting suggestions on. I always try to kind of survey my members and talk to the community and figure out who we should support. But my plan going forward is to try to do that about once a month. Good. Um, that's just kind of another way to connect with the community and support some of the, the awesome organizations around. So that's definitely, if people want to chime in and give me suggestions of who we should support, I'm always looking for, for ideas. Okay. Jeff, you have anything? No. Um, just a... I put Emily in touch with the senior center uh, director as well, and I don't know if you guys have connected yet, but I thought, um, and, and once Sanderson Place starts having um, tenants in it, happy to connect you with yeah. them as well. What's the timeline on that? Are they moving in soon? Or? They are hoping to move in soon. They had a supply chain issue with some of their electrical components, so they're working on an alternative to get... Um, a temporary CBO and then they can start moving people in. But we were there last week and it's pretty finished. Yeah, it looks it from across. I mean, I like see them across the parking lot and they look like they're getting close over there. But I have been curious. But I think it would be it would be great to connect with the residents there and offer like specific classes just for. Um, we have some like midday classes that are really good for like, retired folks. Um, so definitely looking forward to seeing that get open and partnering with them. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. You got any more questions? Just like interview for the newspaper, huh? All right. Um, Emily, we wish you luck. Thank you very much. And if there was anything we can do, our office is always available. Okay. Um, awesome. Don't don't hesitate if or if you have a question. Okay. Just give Jeff or one of us a call, and we'll, we'll do whatever we can for you. But we wish you, Thank you. best of luck. And you chose right side of the river. Yes. <laughs> We're not biased at all. <laughs> no. It's, no. it's, it's no. really, really good in Sutherland. Actually, it's a great, lo great location. I, it was, it was um, interesting because I had a conversation the other day with some, some residents, and, and they were talking, the young residents, so half my age, <laughs> and they were talking about... Um, the vibe in the center of town uh, that it's very positive and there's things happening and they they told they're walking a young uh, their young child and they just thought it was an amazing place and yeah. businesses like yours are help yeah. and contributing to that Emily so thank you very much yes. thank you for choosing thank you for choosing our town thank you for having me okay thank you all right next up temporary alcohol license Mr. 
You want to talk about alcohol license? Yes, um, Ted Samarowski, Samarowski Farms. Uh, we're on our annual potato fest again. It's been about four years because of COVID, we weren't able to have it. Um, last year, didn't have enough help. And uh, this year, all the girls kind of wanted to bring it back. And uh, we we're very busy in harvest season. We couldn't do it in October. So, kind of last minute, we decided November. Um, we got some beautiful weather this weekend. And uh, we had certain vendors calling us, asking if they can come. Uh, BBC being one of them, they uh, they like to join us. And uh, I know it's kind of last minute here, uh, coming into the weekend, and uh, trying to bring them something new for the weekend. Hopefully, I uh, get a younger crowd, a different crowd. Uh, family can come in, and the kids are gonna face paint, play games, and uh, parents can enjoy a nice beverage. And uh, see how it goes. The, the only the only thing the only thing I would say is that the, is you need a fenced in area or a designated area, Most, right? They yeah. they discuss that with you. Birch Bur Bur Bruin, yeah, they've obviously done uh, Mike's Maze. They've done a lot of different events, and they have the whole plan that I'm working on with them. Um, so they're not just roaming around, you know, leaving the farm stand, leaving other properties. Okay. Okay, because so so what what we do just so, you, and you in you're you're probably aware. We talk to the fire chief, police chief, every all the different organizations or responsibilities in town, and we have we have letters from all. None of none of them have a problem. So I just want to remind you that you know you do. We just require that it is fenced or identified. So, yep. um, so do we have anybody check that before to look at that? Does it does the police go look at that or building inspector check it out? Um, I, I don't believe so. I think that that's the ABCC would be the enforcing agency. Um, we could ask somebody. To yeah, I would, I would, I would ask, the, I would, just to ensure that they're, I, I think that's what we used to do. Um, did anybody ever come down to just make sure that it, it was set up? Uh, like the, for the vent, uh, yeah. Or just, uh, yeah, just, just to make sure that there's a an area that's roped off for where like you're serving. Never had alcohol for the event before, so this is something new. Okay. Which I explained. We're gonna, we have a play game plan, um, but yeah, of course, if, if the chief wants to come down, we can uh, work okay. something out. So yeah, and 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 just so, and and I know even when we had like the three hundred down here, we had. Yeah. There was we, a ten. It was roped off. You uh, remember that? Yeah. So we do the same thing. So Jeff, maybe ask the uh, ask the uh, the police chief to 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 look at that. Yep. Okay. Also give me a call and meet up. When you're ready, because because you're doing it this weekend. This weekend, yeah. So I, mean, so we're, I got, we're working every day over there, kind of getting ready, cleaning up. So why don't you use this as a an opportunity to, to uh, let inform the town what's happening? Yeah. So uh, since I was a kid, growing up in the valley, there's always been certain festivals. We did the uh, asparagus festival in the spring. Uh, WGBY, it's pretty big. There's the garlic festival. Um, you know, apple festival. It's cider days this weekend. And uh, with the valley being, you know, a beautiful farming community, potatoes is the biggest crop in the valley, and there was never a festival, so we decided, why not? Um, it's a fun day with uh, games for the kids. They can hop on the tractors, take pictures, and we're gonna have a big potato bar. We're gonna have different potato dishes compared to the usual Polish fruit we sell at the farm stands. So, uh, beautiful weekend, very excited, something different, and I uh, hope to see everybody out there. And and I, the fire chief just wanted to make sure that there's no, no, I think you're saying, you, you said that all your cooking should be happening inside? Uh, well, but in the main, yes, the main. Kitchen, yeah, it's which is inspected, yes. It would be cooking in their kitchen and there would not be any heating or cooking under going on under tents or pop ups. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So and, and and again, it's just it's just because of the concern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Questions? Crystal? Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. Good luck. I hope you I hope you have a great Yeah, the weather looks beautiful for first of November. I mean the other big thing is we're hoping to celebrate being done with the harvest season. We still have like 60 acres of potatoes to dig, so we're they're kind of moving along. I mean, you can't complain. Last year we had 30 inches of rain. This year it's been beautiful weather, beautiful quality, and uh, yeah, hope to finish off strong the next couple of weeks here. I just remember not too many Halloweens ago when we had a snowfall. Yes, we did. Oof. That was a bad one. Oh, I remember that, that very. Was a bad one. 
Oh, yeah, it was a bad I was just looking at Facebook memories of, I was working for Comcast at the time, of, of two weeks of just rehanging lines, yeah. nothing but just tacking them to the sides of houses to get people back online. It was miserable. And I know I'm talking to the choir here. It <laughs> was miserable. Something. That was not a great... Not it a great was miserable for us because the select board was accused of canceling Halloween. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't cancel Halloween. Pretty sure that, that, uh, we didn't do that. that one for us. But, There's uh, no electricity, so what do you want? Yeah. All right. So we need a temporary license. An alcohol license going to be for when, Jeff? Uh, this Saturday and Sunday. Fifth and sixth. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion for a temporary alcohol license for Simrowski's. I motion we grant um, Simrowski's a temporary alcohol license for Saturday and Sunday, the 5th and the 6th. I second that motion. Okay, a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Without hearing any further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 You got it, mister. We can watch so down when, there. When you're ready, when you you're don't ready have to deal the, with the uh, parking. <laughs> when you're ready for the chief to have a look, have him come down and 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 again, just it's just so it's, it's roped off so that we know. Knocked off, yeah, correct. And and you know crowd you know crowd control because that is our responsibility to make as licensing is authority just to make sure. Okay. So minors like me can't sneak in there, right? <laughs> I'm not talking about what you did when you were younger. Come on, so four or five more years and you'll be legal. It'll be fine. <laughs> Good luck, Teddy. Thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, the, uh, so we do have a, uh, um, the Riverside Park donation policy. So that's up. So, um, and again, just bringing that forward for the first time. Yep. Right? Yep. And the poll hearing. Western Mass, are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh the poll. 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 Yeah, that's us. Okay. okay, you're here for the poll hearing? Okay. Yep. But you're not Western Mass. No, no we're no. farmers. You're the owners or yeah. the people you're looking farmers. for it? Okay. So, yeah, that's scheduled for they seven. Have 10 so. minutes, right? Okay. Yes, they do. So, there are certain things that the poll hearing is scheduled for 10 o'clock. I'm 10 o'clock. 7, 7 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, so you can go home. No, so it's now I do not see them here yet. My name's Tom. This is Crystal and Nathaniel. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Peter Lesnica. Hi, Peter. Catching. Nice to meet you also. All right, so. We're, we'll, we're going to continue on um, with other items, and hopefully they're going to be here at 7. Do you want us to leave them come back? Or? Oh, no, you're oh, fine. No, no, public, no, no. These are public meetings. You guys I can... I just didn't want you sitting there if, if you want to talk to us about something else. You, you know what I mean? So we, we try to keep... We, we want to keep people moving. Okay, so next up is... Budget mem memo, Jeff. Yeah, sorry about the typo. It's fiscal year 24 budget memo, not 23. Um, I prepared a draft um, memo uh, asking for budget requests um, that provide level services, which is similar to the budget memo we've put out in previous years. Um, as of today's date we don't know what free cash is going to look like uh we heard was it the last meeting or two meetings ago that we have a pretty healthy expected new growth figure so i don't know if I'll say this so far in my town administrator career we have only asked for level services <laughs> um so i don't know if we want to change that at all i don't i'm not recommending it um i think that so so how how, how have your conversations been going with the insurance uh we've had one meeting okay and they are scheduled to meet again in about two weeks um and the first meeting was really just introductory and laying the groundwork. So I, I would say that we haven't really um, gotten into the work yet. Okay. All right. So, budget to member, what do you guys think? Just a couple of sort of random things. Um, a lot of these dates are 
are wrong, which I'm assuming you already knew. Yes. Um, just one question on the um, the wording of this still uses Sleckman's office and the, the email address I just noticed is Sleckman at Town of Sunderland. Is there any way of getting it updated to Select Board since that's the new language for our board? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think we. A lot of people know that email, so we might keep an alias so that. Oh yeah, no, I don't necessarily mean that we have to get rid of it. Just that in terms of the, you know, at the very least, that it form may be submitted to the selectman's office. If you change that to select board's office, yes. that would be more in line with our new our new name. Um, and maybe we could add another email address that is select met select board at town of Sunderland us, so people can continue to use the old one, but we do have the new one, so over time we can kind of transition into that. Great, thanks. Other than that, it looks great. I, looked, I read the whole thing over yesterday and everything was good. Or this morning. Crystal, anything? No, I mean, I know the level funding thing is probably not what everyone wants to hear, but it's, I don't know if we're there yet for anything other than that. Well, I, I, again, the only thing I would, I would add is that I, I think we're remiss if we don't, if we don't have two budgets presented. I, I think that you have your level service budget, but you also have a, a want list. Each, each department presents a want list so that we understand what, what and where the, the right what the future the, holds. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so, 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 some somehow can you can you. The only thing I would do is, is there if there's things that a, a department is trying to prioritize, I think we should, or that they're struggling with, we should know that also. Now, just a quick question on that. Level budget, does that include cost increases? Um, so like if, if we go to them and say, hey, we gave you $5 million last year, we want to give you $5 million in this year, but a lot of those items cost more. That to me seems like a reduction in services more than it seems like a level budget. Whereas if they come to us and say we're doing exactly what we did last year and it's now going to cost you 25% more than it did last year, that's sort of a... Yeah, so level services is not level funding. Okay. It is you tell us what it's going to cost to provide the same level of services as you did in the gotcha. prior fiscal year. Okay, that makes more sense. So, uh, and then we will figure out how to pay for it. <laughs> it, it is. That's the fun part. So yeah, so so we actually know we actually know, um, we have we have many, the level services is to basically provide the same services that you're doing right now. Yep. A, a, a zero increase is that you you would see <coughs> what is is a look at what if the town funded you with the same dollars today, what would it affect? And and I think we also should look, and, and again, I, I think we should also look at if there are, because we've done a lot of years with no increases mm -hmm. um, or ex expansion of services. We should also, we should also look at if there's any pent up frustrations and where they are so that we, as a town, if, if we say that they're severe enough, we'd be able to look at doing something for that. So, and and I know that opened up a a, a can of worms sometime, but I I also believe that our our department um, chairs and heads understand what that means also. So if if they're if they're struggling if they're struggling to provide a service, we need to know. So, such as if a town clerk can't put on an election because of, she doesn't have money to put the election on, we need to know that. Yep. Or she doesn't have help, and we need more. But we, you, you right. need to, you need to have it, or at least you need to start being able to document it. So, if you have right. to make a change, at some point you have to have it, have that documentation. Yep. So, it's, well, we didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't want our first we hear of it to be. We're in crisis. I like to. I agree. I like to. I don't know now that this is, could be an issue next year or in the next five. Or well, gonna, right, and you're gonna look. And you're gonna look ahead, and and so you should, you need to start looking ahead also. Okay. So that we can we can work. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Jeffrey.
Anything else? All right. Um, next up is the, I know, 7 o'clock, and they're not here, so we'll let that go for one second more. The Discuss Franklin County Solid Waste Management Di District Board appointment. Yes, so the last Sunderland appointee was Mark Zynan. Um We checked with him and uh, he was satisfied with his current uh, list of appointments and was not uh, interested in being reappointed. Okay. Anybody want to be the solid waste? Did we check with the Energy Committee and see if somebody from that was interested? Um, we were, we have not. Okay. I can. Because didn't we think that yeah. they, someone from there? Yep. So if no one is interested, you know, from one of these committees, you know, specifically, in my opinion, the Energy Committee, who's looking you know, to work on a transfer station or an, at, at least those type of, if one of them is interested, fine. If not, you know, I think coming back to us and saying, or do you need this appointment? Like, yeah, yes, I'm willing to when's do your next it? meeting? In that <coughs> um, right, and so what I, I don't thanks. know, but I think she was asking for somebody to be appointed in the November time frame. So I think we have some Okay, time. all right. Okay. So, so Crystal is gonna, she would take on um, I, I, the heavy lift. I think it's only four meetings a year. That's the letter said, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's do that. We'll do that next 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 month. The um, ARPA request. Uh, still have not gotten confirmation from the elevator company. Um, so that's why you didn't okay. see an updated memo. Um, okay. It, it might become an emergency thing if they say, yeah, you need to do it by December 31st and they can prove it. I got an email last week and it said, if you're, you had your elevator inspected and we made a note that this was an issue, it needs to be corrected by December 31st. We had our elevator inspected. There were no issues identified. So our maintenance people have not been able to give me a satisfactory answer as to why we would spend eight to ten thousand um, dollars at this time uh, if you all know more about it and you say yeah all these elevators need i know to be nothing changed, about elevators <laughs> yeah you could do it i mean i think the worst the worst case is if they can't give us an explanation we say don't do it we get our elevator inspected again. They said, hey, it doesn't have this thing. It doesn't pass. I believe you. They give us a temporary 30 to 90 days to fix it. They come back and they inspect it again. Um, and we're out the two inspection fees. So so what I would do, Jeff, is that, again, I know with supply, ch supply chain issues, I would, find, I would ask our elevator people, are, are there materials that we need to have ordered now? And and because you could get a thirty day, um, thirty day extension, and find out that your parts are six months out. So I I would think that we'd want to identify what what parts are necessary, and and start. And if it's something that we're going to have to do, right? We, we really look. We should look at having the parts on hand, if we need to do it. But yesterday when I did my elevator inspection. Could I do all the elevator inspections on the side? Oh, it's nice to have a part-time job. Hey, yeah. Good for you. But uh, I usually don't go buy a code book or anything. I just, just sign a piece of paper. But I, I have no idea if you need it or not. And, and so we, we would have to talk to our maintenance group, right? Now, the maintenance, is it provided through contract through the fur car? Uh, no. It's... Um I think we contract directly with Otis Elevator. All right. So let's find out. Let's find out what we need to do. Okay. Yep. It's, it's not hard. It's only hard when they don't get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. But if you don't pay a bill, they would get back to you really quick, <laughs> wouldn't they? I'm sure they would. Yep. Yeah. But maybe next time we'll take the same amount of time paying the bill as they take to try to get hold of us when we ask a question. 
Not that I'm making a recommendation, but maybe I just don't, maybe we won't sign the next warrant when they have a bill on it. These things never work in my favor. <laughs> I, I always think that I can do that. I know, but it makes you feel like good. It and feels good saying it, I, I guess. <laughs> you know, when, you, like, when you're dealing with insurance and you go, well, I'll just take as long to pay that insurance bill as they took to do the work. See, see what you can do with that, Jeff, would you please? Are we going to be here next week? Yes. Okay. Yeah, planning on it. The uh, letter of support for South County Senior Center grant application? Yes. The Senior Center is applying for a regional uh, regionalization and efficiency grant um, to help both um, study the feasibility of using the Congregational Church in Deerfield as a senior center and also um, cover some costs related to um, developing a long-term master plan for the senior center. Okay. Uh, and the, so the, as Tom knows, the Board of Oversight is meeting tomorrow night. The grant is due the 7th. So this is the meeting and that you know I guess maybe a motion sign it contingent on tomorrow's meeting going well and everybody approving that we're applying I don't know but yeah um, that's what I would recommend we have we have I, I mean we're, we're supposed to be discussing what time's our meeting tomorrow six is it in person over there it's yes it, it's at the Amherst Road. Yeah. okay so we're supposed to discuss, and, and there's there seems to be opposition to the Congregational Church in Deerfield. It used to be the Congregational Church in Deerfield for the senior center to go there. There's there's some that think there's not there's that it would not serve the best interest of the seniors to go in that location next. So we're going to be discussing that tomorrow night. It would be a quick, quick meeting, 10 minutes or so. Okay. So I would entertain a motion contingent upon the Board of Oversight's vote tomorrow night. How's that? All right. So I motion that the letter of support dependent upon the Board of Oversights and and, and the, the approval the, or and, and it should there, Senator Comerford and, and Natalie work to get this in the budget to get it through and I, I, I would I do not I do not want to minimize their their assistance because we would have never gotten that assistance without S Senator Comerford and Representative Blaze Assistance. So they 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 were they were asked and they they performed for us. They 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 they're 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 trying to help us out. Um, but it's more of a right now. It's more of a discussion to th uh, between the three towns is where the senior center going. We we've had from what I've understand is that there's people t have told the senior center direction director from Deerfield that they they don't believe that the senior center because of all the um, construction or, or building projects in the, the town of Deerfield right now that the senior center would ever have a, does not have a good chance of, of going forward with a new project in the town of Deerfield. I personally don't think that's our only option. Um, I've talked about what I believe with the, um, I don't necessarily believe that you have to build right now. I think, and I've asked the senior center director, Jennifer, I've asked her to put together a needs, what the, the senior center, what what her, her and her staff and the seniors believe are the programs that are gonna be offered in the size space. And I think we should be able to put out an RFP and see if there's there's a there's an ability to rent or somebody has a lease that space in, in our three towns. I think that should be an, that should be table that should be out in the option also, mm -hmm. or is it better to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a on a facility that may not meet the needs of our our seniors? I I think that 
we have to take one step. I, I do not know what the property, I'm not in the real estate business. I don't know what's available right now. Mm -hmm. um, but if we put out, if we put out, for, for all I know, we're the luscious green or green luscious or whatever that luscious is. Green. I mean, maybe they maybe they would want to lease. Maybe that's not going to be to fruition, and they they want to lease it to the senior center up on. And maybe that would be a good option. I don't. Maybe there's a place in the center of Deerfield, South Deerfield, that that's available to rent right now, but people haven't approached them. There there's lots of there's lots of facilities that we may not we haven't identified the 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 space. Matter of fact, I was over at. Uh, the uh, the senior center administration building the other day, and I'd be hard pressed to understand why that couldn't work as a senior center with some if if they if they had a hundred thousand dollars over there, I mean we could put in a kitchen we could do, you know make the basement accessible, I, I mean I would say that 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 would be an option, but that being said. Right. It's a three town. It's right, until you know what they truly need for square footage, for office space, etc. It's hard to. Right, it's easy to talk, but you have to put down things on paper so we can understand. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion made and seconded to support um, the memo. Depending on what we say tomorrow night at the board of oversight meeting. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Next up, Jeff. I'm gonna say, do we postpone the poll, the, whole, the continue the poll hearing? Do you guys have a phone number for the? I'm trying to. Find you. Oh, all right. I'm just thinking, you know, if she just said that she was. We've never been stood up before. This Good. is the second time. Second time. You know Lucky. what? I have his cell phone. Do we wanna? Well, just in case they're just do you like. Give him a call. Yeah, just in case they're like stuck in traffic and can't get through the lights because of trick or treaters or something, you never know. You don't Went know. Went straight to a voicemail. Do do we wanna do we wanna um, allow our guests to speak since they're here, so we, they don't have to come back to the next time if they don't feel like they want to, or do we want to just continue the whole thing? T typically, it'd be better if they. I mean, they, they really. I mean, we could open the public hearing. I think we opened it. We opened it last, last week. week. So, right. so, so, so that we could continue, continue it. So. So, I'm, it, it's up to you. If they want, my thing, though, is that what they say, the electric light people may want to hear what they're saying. Hey, we can give them the link to the Zoom, the, the, the Zoom meeting and tell them you didn't show up, you watch this. I don't know what else, you, you know, maybe they, maybe they like coming to to a select board meeting on probably first time we've been in town hall, huh? See, look at that. And, and this is the happening place on Halloween night, you know. Oh, yes, busiest place in town. What we'd like to do? Do you want you want to say something, or do you want to come back? We could. So if we say something, it doesn't affect anything, right? As far as getting approval for it. I don't know, depending on what you're saying. If, you, if you're going to say it's going to electrify your house and it's a terrible idea, I guess, yeah, it probably would mean something to us. But we'd just like to have the polls put in so we can, uh, for our new workshop, get it electrified. So it's actually, um, it's using grant funds from uh, the Food Infrastructure Security Grant, um, and it's... It will power our building. <laughs> so Are you out of time restriction that you're being held up for? The sooner the better. We've been waiting yeah. a we while. To, yeah, we need to get reimbursements and things. So yeah. it's done, that would be <laughs> Have you talked to him since our postponement or uh, continuance? Yep. Yeah, he uh, had something come up and apologized, and I said it's been continued to 7 p.m. tonight. So I will reach out to him. So again we, we have two Sunland residents that that are that are trying to get something accomplished, right? Yep. So we don't make threats, but we would think that they wouldn't want people that have to pay for their electricity to be without electricity because they can't make a meeting, and they could even attend the meeting on Zoom. And I sent them that. Right. Yep. 
So I, I, would, I would say that we would try to get their attendance next week, right? Yep. Make it 6.30? Uh, make it 7. Yes, we can make it 6.30, yep. I, I, I don't understand why, well, and again, I, I would, they can come on Zoom, they can come, so make it at 7 o'clock, but they have both options, okay? Yep. Are All you right. guys okay with the placements of the poles and everything like that? You're fine where they want to place the equipment and... Oh, yeah. Okay. It's all on our land, except there's one pole across the street. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The most important one. The pole that needs to connect them all. <laughs> and they've already put in other poles, so it's... It's just, yeah, we need... Yeah. Ready to go. Everything's up. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry that they didn't show up. All right. We'll continue. Um, select board updates. So, do we have to officially open that? I think we. We continue. You're welcome. Sorry about that. Have a good one. Opened it. It's still open. Okay. We continue to. So, all right. Yeah. Select board updates. I got nothing. Nathaniel, I'm good. Um, so the only thing we when we started talking about the senior center, and I would just like to share a little bit. Um, the November, the November uh, edition of the South County Senior Center newsletter um, was just published, and. I think it's kind. Of, there's there's a lot of information. Um, the the new d director Jennifer Remillard has been in in that position now for nine months, um, and she was talking a little bit about how much the senior center, how they welcomed her, and how they're working things together, and trying out new things. But uh, there are volunteers in case people are looking for there are volunteer opportunities uh, to support the programs and the staff and and they can you can always call Jennifer at 665-2141 but like on Monday Wednesdays Fridays there's uh, there's a need for volunteers to help with greeting senior center members and new members setting up refreshments for programs, setting up tables for refreshments, breaking down, cleaning up. Monday, Wednesday, or Friday afternoons here in Sunderland, uh, there's need for volunteers helping with setting up refreshments and afternoon drop-ins. Uh, senior center members assistant, breaking down, cleaning up. There's also assistance need just with copying, filing, organization. So, if you have any time, you'd like to volunteer, the senior center either here or over in Deerfield um, is looking for help and volunteers. The South County Senior Center presents the first in a series of community preparedness events. Uh, the first one is going to be on Wednesday, November 2nd at 1030 at uh, 29 Sugarloaf Street, South Deerfield to learn how to handle an active shooter situation with Sergeant Brian Ravish, Ravish of the uh, Deerfield Police Department. Um, we do have a new outreach coordinator and and Chris, uh, you may be hearing from Chris Goudreau. Um, he'll be talking, he's trying to um, get out, talk to people, talking about all the uh, the scams that uh, that are played on senior center, senior citizens and actually our, our, our communities um, and the grandparent scam which is which involves scammers pretending to be a grandchild asking for money to solve an urgent financial problem such as car repairs overdue rent jail bond that'd be a good one my grandchild called up and say he needed jail bond hmm in cases like this an easy way to spot the would-be scammer would be to ask them a question only a close family member would know but it's not revealing of any personal data. Um, so there's there's a lot, but exercise and collaboration with the Cadence Yoga Center um, and grants from the Wells Trust and Life Path 
We continue to offer chair yoga on Mondays at 1 p.m., healthy bones and balance on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. at the 289 Amherst Road, Sunderland. For more information, contact Allison or Rebecca. Tai Chi classes uh, resume November 3rd. The class is sponsored by the, the Wells Trust. Um, and join us every Thursday at 1 p.m. at the Whitley Town Hall for these Tai Chi classes. Uh, cribbage, if you're a cribbage turner, they have cribbage. monthly cribbage. So, I, I mean, there, there's a lot of things going on. The South County Senior Center um, now has a van and will begin ma run, making, uh, begin running mid-November this month. They're gonna be offering transportation on Thursdays, November 15th and 22nd to the Hampshire Mall and the Mountain Farms Mall. The lead time will be 10.30 from the South County Senior Center offices, which is right here in Sunderland, registered by Monday. So they, they are asking for reservations because the seating is limited to six people, registered early. If you need to be picked up from your home in Deerfield, Sunderland, Whiteley, please call 665-2141 and, and then the regular schedule will be announced later. Arts and crafts, there, there's a whole bunch of things going on. So if you're interested or you, you just want to get to know the senior center a little bit better, um, take advantage and give Jennifer a call at the senior center or Chris or Sue. Jeff, town administrator updates. Uh, just one, the fire department received a gift from the Sugarloaf Mountain Athletic Club um, in the amount of $500 to thank them for their support of um, two races in 2021 and 2022 um, in Sunderland. And so uh, I would like to ask that the select board vote to accept the gift. Uh, and they, by the way, they've asked that it be restricted for the purposes of acquiring equipment and defraying operating costs for the fire department. Motion. I motion we accept the gift. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded to accept the gift. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Anything else? Um, public comment? I don't know. Any comment, Peter? Nope. Uh, Looks like we're good. I hear someone in the hallway. Is that possibly? I don't know. There's a Jonathan. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. I just want to make sure yeah, it wasn't the poll hearing guy. Yeah, <laughs> too late. We'll see him pulling in the parking lot as we're driving away. Okay. Jeff, anything else? Nope. Motion. I motion we adjourn. Seconded. Aren't you going to do it in your spooky voice? You don't think my voice is bad enough to start with? I gotta change it. <laughs> See, we laugh more over on the side of the river, don't we? They don't laugh over there, dude. Nah, I didn't think so. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn our Halloween evening meeting. Better than when I was 16 years old, being chased by the Sunderland PD. Um, but There's still Friday. time for tonight. Huh? You got time. Shh, to don't ruin get it. Get out there and don't ruin the surprise. All right. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Declare unanimous, and that we will be out at uh, seven twenty-four. And our next meeting is eleven seven. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Next.